in deriving the electromagnetic waves wave equation, we have to look at the governing laws of the electric field and the magnetic field and how they play with each other. Um, these are known as Maxwell's equation, as you've seen me list out them here somewhat messily. Uh, you got Gauss's law, Gauss's law for magnetic field, Faraday's law, and Ampere's law. Um, you might want to copy that down. If this is too messy for you, I'm sure you can just Google or Wikipedia Maxwell's equation and you'll see them in their nice clean mathematical form. So just to interpret what these laws mean as a quick review for you guys, let's go through them one by one. Gauss's law talks about how if you have a, um, I guess, bubble in space and this bubble encloses a certain charge, um, it creates some kind of electric field and when you add up all these electric fields, you can work out how much charge there is inside this bubble. So Gauss's law talks about how charges create electric fields in space. For magnetic fields, however, you can't have a kind of like a magnetic monopole inside. So you can only have magnetic field goes in from one side and leaves to the other side. And they always equal zero because you can never trap any um, bit of magnetic monopole. So this is also saying that there's no magnetic monopoles. Faraday's law is the one that talks about how if you have a loop of wire and you are changing the magnetic flux inside that loop by either moving it in or moving it out, you can get some EMF that goes around that loop. So how changing magnetic field gives you changing electric fields. And then you have Ampere's law, which the first part is just talking about if you have a wire, you're going to create some kind of magnetic field around a loop. And then the second part kind of comes about when you consider a capacitor being charged up, that while you have magnetic field here due to current and magnetic field here due to current, here you also have magnetic field, but there's no current because it's open plate, but the electric field is changing. So this is the last piece of the puzzle where you have changing magnetic field, sorry, changing electric field gives you changing magnetic field. So this from here that you have your changing B gives changing E, and this is changing E gives changing B, and it is this symmetry that allows us to form the wave equation. So these are the basis from which we'll work and develop our wave equation. Now, to prove this equa the wave equation and derive it in general, uh, we will need some more advanced vector calculus. So we're going to go a little simpler and focus on a particular type of solution to see if it conforms to our four Maxwell's equation. And that simpler solution is what's known as a plane wave. 